Hey guys, my name is Dr. Sam. Some of you have been asking me to talk about type 2 diabetes and how to control blood sugars, read HbA1c levels and what foods to eat to stop insulin spikes. Holy cow! Well today let me answer your questions and I'll add in some of my tips along the way too. Okay, just to be 100% clear, please know that today I'm only going to be talking about type 2 diabetes, not type 1. These conditions are very different. I want to make this as simple as possible for you, so please let me know in the comments if there are aspects you want me to go into in more detail, or there are things I have completely skipped. <laughs> what causes type 2 diabetes? Normally your body makes insulin which helps mop up the sugar in your bloodstream so that the glucose can be used in your cells, tissues, organs, etc. But in type 2 diabetes people are insulin resistant, meaning there is lots of insulin around and lots of sugar in the blood, but the body can't use insulin properly to mop up the sugar. Why do people get insulin resistance? We don't 100% know, but the biggest risk factor for developing insulin resistance is obesity. What makes insulin resistance worse? I'm going to channel my inner Dr. Jason Fung here as I agree with him that type 2 diabetes is a dietary disease and if you have high levels of natural insulin in your body already, taking more insulin is not going to help. You have to fix the insulin resistance. So how do you do that? I'll tell you in a minute, but first let's talk about how to read HbA1c levels. Like everything in medicine, there are millions of acronyms and HbA1c is a blood test that stands for glycosylated hemoglobin type A1c. It's a very clever test which doesn't lie and tells you what your average blood glucose level has been over the last three months. Now to make it more confusing for you, there are two different types of units. I'll explain both as the units will differ depending on where you live. There are percentage readings and millimole per mole readings. So for example, 7% is about 53 millimoles per mole, which means that your sugars have on average been running at 8.6 millimoles per litre if you live in the UK, or 154.8 milligrams per deciliter if you live in the US. What HbA1c level should you be aiming for with type 2 diabetes? Well this is a can of worms as it will depend on heaps of factors, but generally speaking, the lower the better. My exceptions for higher targets are when people are at risk of hypoglycemia. They are frail, elderly, live alone or have severe vascular complications. A good target is an HbA1c of between 50 to 55 millimoles per mole or between 6.7 to 7.2%. Bear in mind that a normal non-diabetic person will have an HbA1c of less than 40 millimoles per mole or 5.8%, meaning their normal daily blood sugars are very constant at around 6.5 or 117. Now why are lower levels of HbA1c good? This is because lower levels mean you have good sugar control, or the sugars aren't wildly fluctuating so your poor liver can cope with maintaining your sugar at a steady level. It also reflects how well your diabetes is going as higher levels of HbA1c are associated with increased risk of complications down the road. Good glycemic control is usually associated with better immune function as well. What about testing your sugar with blood glucose meters? What levels should you be aiming for? This is such a common question I get from my new diabetic patients and broadly I'd suggest that you try to have a level of between 4 to 7 or 72 to 126 before meals. After meals it should be under 8.5 or 153. Now what I'm about to say is extremely important so please listen to this if nothing else. Sugars are a symptom of diabetes rather than the cause. People get fixated on treating blood sugar numbers with medications rather than thinking about it the other way around. If your numbers are high, then your diabetes is not good and you need to address the cause, which is by treating insulin resistance. So Dr. Sam, how do you fix insulin resistance naturally? Like everything in life, it is not just one solution. I'm sorry to say it, but it's true. Here are the six things I think you should start doing to control your blood sugars. Number one, work on decreasing chronic stress. Many studies have shown that decreasing chronic stress can decrease cortisol hormone, which thereby lowers blood sugars and consequently your insulin levels. 
Number two, get a good night's sleep. I made another video on how to get a good sleep, which you can check out later, but sleep decreases your hunger hormone, which is known as ghrelin. And people who don't sleep enough end up with too much ghrelin in their system, so the body thinks it's hungry and encourages you to start eating. So make sure you get enough shut eye. Number three, avoid sugars, sweetened drinks, processed foods, and refined grains. I know you've heard this all before, but this is the dietary solution to type 2 diabetes. You need to eat more fruit, vegetables, beans, lentils, whole grains, lean proteins, and healthy fats. Reduce the amount of carbohydrates you have, particularly refined carbs like white rice, pasta, and white bread, because these foods are quickly broken down into simple sugars that cause blood sugar spikes and insulin spikes. Number four, no snacking. Between meals, as long as you don't snack, your insulin levels will go down and your fat cells can then release their stored sugar to be used as energy. You will lose weight if you let your insulin levels go down. You can also help this along by being active throughout the day when you aren't eating. Do some exercise and build muscle tone. Number five, consider intermittent fasting. I personally like the concept of intermittent fasting because it doesn't cost you anything but time. If you limit the hours of the day when you eat to just eight hours, say from between 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. or even 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., this has been shown in studies to dramatically lower insulin levels, significantly improve insulin sensitivity, and even lower blood pressure. The best part is that it significantly reduces your appetite so that you aren't starving. Number six, avoid snacking or eating at night time. I throw in saying no snacking again in case you missed it, but seriously, nighttime eating is not going to help you and is associated with a higher risk of obesity. Remember, you need time away from food for your body's own insulin levels to go down. Is there anything else? One medication that has been shown to improve insulin resistance is metformin. I made a separate video on this. If you want more information, please check it out. Otherwise, if you are keen to work on things naturally, I completely support that too. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button for new videos every single week, and hit the bell to get notified when I post new videos on Tuesdays. Remember to comment below if you want some points covered in more detail or if there are things I haven't mentioned that you think I should have. I'm happy to do a more in-depth series on diabetes if you hit me up in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.